Well, I'm Mom met me now. My name is Lois Albrecht. I have worked at Kent Park for three summers. I'm, my technical title is a naturalist intern, but I guess you could also say I'm like an environmental education assistant. Is really like what I am. Um, and what I know I'm not Harry Graves. And Harry is the most highly placed person here, and I'm the most lowly placed person. <laughs> so you have, you, you, I'm not a substitute. Uh, but I think what you'd like me to do is talk a little bit about what's happening in the park, is that right? And just a few things. So the, really the most exciting thing that's happening is what we already started talking about, and that's the trumpeter swans. So as I just said, we got two trumpeter swans. They came from Iowa State and the DNR. They are juvenile trumpeter swans. So if, you get, if you're able to get a little bit close to them, you will see that they are not completely white yet. Their necks are kind of a real pretty rusty color, kind of a pale rusty beige color. And within a couple of years, when they're fully mature, they will be all white except for the, the, the beak and the front part of their nose and their feet. And it's really an exciting thing for us to have them here because trumpeter swans are one of the great recovery, environmental recovery stories. There was a period of over 100 years where there were no trumpeter swans at all in Iowa, not any. And in fact, there were less than 100 trumpeter swans in the entire United States. And those were only on one National Wildlife Refuge, I think it was in Idaho or Wyoming, out west anyway. So in about maybe in the last 30 or 40 years, the Iowa DNR, along with many other organizations throughout the Midwest, have done a very hard effort to return them. And the DNR's count this winter was that there were almost 300 trumpeter swans in Iowa. And so that's, an, and I think Minnesota and Wisconsin have a lot of trumpeter swans. And I think there are like maybe around 20,000 trumpeter swans in the United States now. So that's really a wonderful story. But you were asking about the predators. And um, released trumpeter swans, uh, there's a mortality rate of about 60 to 70 percent. So we're not counting our eggs before they're hatched here at all, literally. We hope that these trumpeter swans will return. They're very beautiful birds. When, we, when they were first released, if you read about them in the paper, there was a picture, I think, of Harry with one. We released them over on that side of the park with a, we had a large group of small children here that day, so they got to watch him. We took all the buses way back out and beyond in the park. But that pond, they just weren't happy in, and it wasn't as secluded. So within 48 hours, they were out of the pond, across the fence, out of the park. Oh. Within a week, they were on the Highway 6. Oh my. So Harry and Brad and a couple of other staff from the park rangers caught them and brought them over to a pond that's up there. And they have been there now for about three weeks, and they seem pretty happy. So we are hoping that they will stay here until it gets cold, until the ice starts to freeze. Then, as I said, they'll go to the nearest open water, and then we hope that they like it enough that they'll come back. The other part of that story is that these are just two swans. They are not, they were not already dating when we brought them here. So that they feel comfortable together and form a pair and, and migrate together, come back together, and when they're mature that they mate and actually have eggs and produce cygnets, um, big swans. That's a lot of eggs. So they you may not like great for Yeah, exactly. Exactly, exactly. They might not. You know, so um, there are a lot of ifs. And one thing I wanted to tell you, for those of you who aren't able to walk all the way out to see them, there are a, a pair of trumpeter swans on the highway between Lake McBride State Park and Ely that you can see much closer from the road. So if you really want to see a pair of trumpeter swans and you can't make it here, that's a good place to go look for them. Well, so where is that again? If, you, if you drive, there, I don't, it's, it's got a funny number. It's like W6E or EW6 or something like that. It's the blacktop paved road that runs. If, if you're going from Solon to Lake McBride, mm -hmm. there's a road that turns north off of that that goes to Ely. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. right there. So it's like a T or a Y just on the northwest corner of Solon. You go one way to Lake McBride, and that would be west. If you go north, that goes up to Ely, and then you can take a turn and go to Swish or Shuiville. Right. And on that road, there's a bunch of wetlands, and they, they released a pair of trumpet swans oh. there. And you can often see those from the road. 
Okay, so where are they exactly? All right, now someone made fun of me the other day because I um, <laughs> told somebody the wrong pond. Okay, it's this pond right here. And you, you were on the bus the other day, so you saw. It's right here. So if you want to walk in and see it, you would park at Valley View Park here. Park Valley, Valley View parking lot, and that's marked Valley View. Then there are several trails that lead around, and you can get down to, there's like a little dam at the top of this wetland. You can walk across the dam. What mostly happens is by the time you get down there, if you're making any noise at all, or they are aware of you, then they immediately swim to this far back area. Now, last night when we were there for the prairie hike, we walked around, and we were much closer. The wind, the wind was, coming from the swans towards us. And I think they weren't quite as aware of us as they usually are. And they swam around quite a bit. And I was down there on Sunday. I had a prairie, a little prairie hike, and I took one of the ladies who wanted to see it down there. And one, they weren't swimming together at that point. One of them was very close. We got some very nice close-up pictures. So the key is just to be super quiet, I think. And if you're with a group of people and you start to talk, they hear that and they're gone. Because I think when they when when they got on the road and then they got caught, I think that was pretty traumatic for them. And so they're pretty shy of people right now. You think people being around might have to do with them being uncomfortable and maybe not coming back? I don't know. I, I, I honestly I'm not I don't know enough about it to say. But I, I hope that's not true. And there are some there are a couple places in Iowa where there's a lot of swans on a farm pond where people, you know, are right there. So I don't know. I hope that's not the case. And you know, really, people walk by them, but I don't believe that anybody's going to bother them, you know, harass them, and hopefully, no one will let a dog run around and chase them or that kind of thing. So, but it's you know, it's part. So. so that's our biggest news about the swans, and that's very exciting. And we will keep people updated about, like, we've put pictures on our Facebook page a few times in the newsletter. I mean, it will certainly be in the newsletter if they come back next year. And for those of you, is anybody here on Facebook? Not yet? Uh, sort of? I don't have an account, but I'm Okay. Because you can, if you, we, we started, that's another one of the new things that we've done here. We started being on Facebook as a county page, oh, probably right around the middle of May, about a month ago. And so we post all of the happenings all the time of what's going on here. Uh, and I've been doing prairie flowers that are blooming once a week. So that, and then I'll put where they are. So you can look at that, and then you can go to that place, and I'll describe it. So, And I'll, I usually do that Friday evenings, because I don't very much do on Friday evenings. So I'll probably do that again tonight. So, um, so we're, and we're also on Twitter. Now, I'm not on Twitter. Brad Friedolf does that. But if you're a Twitter person, Brad will put on Twitter pretty much any anything that's cited or seen. And on the Facebook page, like when someone found a box turtle, an ornate box turtle, we took a picture of that. And I don't, do you all know about the ornate box turtle? Where would he be? This is one of the few places left in, anywhere, in, in Iowa too, where ornate box turtles live. And they are an endangered turtle. They are terrestrial, so we only see them on land. And the main places, any place, you actually can see them anywhere in the park. But the, main, the most likely places would be, they like dry prairie. So the higher places, not down in the lower places, although they go to the campground a fair amount. I don't think that's all that dry in all its parts. But um, up at Valley View, the last one I saw that was last summer that I personally saw was on the, right out in the open on the Valley View Prairie. Mm -hmm. So the key is if you're walking to look down. And people see them crossing the road here and they see them on the trails. How long are they? They are about this big around. If anybody wants to see an ornate box turtle, we have one in captivity at the education center that's quite elderly. I think she's been there a long time. And uh, you, can, you can stop by and look. I'd be happy to show that to you. Uh, so, ornate box, so if we see an ornate box turtle, that would be it. If we see any kind of wildlife, um, like later this summer, I'm going to put a whole thing in on butterflies because we have some beautiful butterflies out there. So if you're on Facebook, I would encourage you to do that because you really do keep up. You know when the hikes are and things like that.
Okay, so the swans, Facebook, those are probably the two most unique new things. I, if you haven't been here for a while when you drove in, the uh, headquarters building has been open about a year, a little, probably about 14 months, I don't know, maybe longer than that, but not terribly long. And that is an energy efficient building. It has all kinds of energy and environmentally good things done in terms of the heating system, the insulation, the building materials, and it's really a lovely, beautiful, but, but not fancy building, it's very nice. They're going to put a rain garden, bioswale kind of thing, below the parking lot there to catch rainwater. And I think rain gardens type things are something that we'll be doing more about here. Um, the, the talk last night was led by Dave Wade, who is our vegetation specialist. And one of the things he talked about last night that I've seen in my three years here is a continuing movement to open up a lot of the, the, the brush and shrubbery, get rid of that to keep moving more back towards a prairie type of environment here. And so in the summer, I guess you might be interested to know what the summer staff is like here. We have five retired people working here in the summer. Me, one guy, Cliff, who mows. Uh, John, who works on the maintenance crew, and then um, the campground hosts. So we have five retired people. We have another intern besides me who's a full-time college student at Iowa State. And we have, um, I want to say, eight college or high school age guys, but it might not be eight. It might be six and it might be nine. And they work for the vegetation crew, the maintenance crew, and vegetation and maintenance. So you'll see a lot of strapping young guys around mm -hmm. here in the summer wearing green t-shirts. So we have a, a lot of staff. So these ve the vegetation team works really hard in the summer with uh, invasive species and opening up as much of the park as they can, get rid of a lot of that terrestrial sh shrubbery and provide a better environment for prairie plants. And these folks have already heard my prairie talk. So in, twice in one week would be too much for anybody. But I do want to show you a little bit. One of the things we've added, and I, do you, have you all been to the Education Center here? Yes. Okay, it is open from Labor Day, from Memorial Day to Labor Day, 12 to 4 every day. And one of the things we added this year, and uh, that I kind of have been working on, is it's very basic, it's not electronic, but it's all the plants that are blooming at the current time. And the Education Center open every Saturday and Sunday, 12 to 4. So if you come out and you want to walk, but you would like a little preview on what to look for, you can look for this. Now, they aren't all living at the Education Center. Some of them are elsewhere. And I'm not going to talk in length about all these, but I want to tell you about a couple things. This one, the top here, Butterfly Milkweed, is beautiful. And they uh, burned almost all the prairies this winter. And last winter they didn't burn any. So in, in April, actually, in winter, late, early in April, and we have seen between the burning and the rain, the prairies have just gone crazy in the summer. They are just astonishing. So there's more little places where you see this here and there. But if you are able to walk about a quarter of a mile and feel like doing it, there is a spot over behind the Whippoorwill shelter where there is a lot of this. And I was over there this morning, and it's it's just now at the pretty much, this is actually a photo I took last summer, but it's pretty much at that fully open, and it's really, really gorgeous. It's a little bit of a walk in, and there is, uh, you have to walk through a little bit of vegetation to get to it, but it's really beautiful. There are actually some small parks of it all over in very many places. Butterfly milkweed blooming right now, and we're, uh, the other intern and I are going to go out later this afternoon because the butterflies become, I, I think, intoxicated as they drink this stuff. And they get slower as the day warms up and they, they get slower and slower. You can get some really nice butterfly photographs. And that's where you find all of the caterpillars in the fall. Yes. Uh -huh. Because they uh -huh. believe that they're sure. sure, sure. And so this morning I found, and it's not just monarchs, we have a lot of great spraying of fritillaries. Yeah, I, I have a question. Yeah. Oh, I don't know anything about butterflies, except, oh, okay. okay, go ahead, ask me. Well, I've got a picture I, on my camera of a butterfly that I took last week that was on our porch on the um, 
give me a try? Yeah. And I think it's a great spangle, but I can really Okay, see. I can tell you that one. Okay. Now, what I did, I just took, what I do, there's a website called discover.org, I think. Okay. And you can, it doesn't always work, but you can go through it, and it asks you, what's the predominant color of the butterfly? What kind of tail shape does it have? What kind of scoopiness yeah. does it have? Those things I know. But this one I did. Yeah. Okay, so. I didn't want to. I don't know if I have a great spangle on here. I have a question about milkweed. What's the difference between just plain milkweed and butterfly? Okay, I will. I, this one I found this morning, I think, is a. Um, Oh, I wrote it down. I sent myself an email. The last thing I did before I came over here, I sent myself with an email because I can't remember all these butterfly names. It's a type of swallowtail. Yep, that's what that is. Oh, yay. Mm, that's a great spangled for Larry. <laughs> oh, sure. Show sure. it. Okay, and this one, I think this is some kind of a swallowtail. I took this just a little while ago. Let me see if I, I might have, can you see the color? Oh, yeah, it'll, it'll come back. It'll well, that's good that you got that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the one I took this morning. And that's, oh. I, it's, it's something pine swallowtail. Oh, oh yeah. And I have, there are an incredible variety of butterflies. I don't know if you remember that slide I showed in the slide top with all the butterflies on it. I had like, there are just tons of butterflies out. Yeah. I'm just gonna flip through a couple more. Spiderwort is just beautiful. It's almost gone. We had the most incredible display of spiderwort. I, the, the hillsides were purple, oh, and I'm not exaggerating. There's a little bit left. You drive around, you'll see a little spiderwort. It's the dark blue one. Okay, wild quinine is about gone. The well white what does indigo. That look like? the wild quinine looks like that. And it's, I've got a lot of, is this, this isn't the best. No, no, this is wild white indigo. Oh, now, yeah. The pale tongue, uh, pale, pale beard tongue has been incredible out here. And over on the west side, there are a couple places where the whole hill is white. It's almost gone. Let's see, I think that's coming up. Yes, that's this one, pale beard tongue. Oh, yeah. And we had lots and lots of it. And mostly the really pale, there's almost white pink. Daisy Fleabane, there is just tons of that right now. And you, you'll drive, as you drove in, you saw a lot of that coming yeah, in. Real, real little one, isn't it? Yeah, it's real little. It's actually they look like it's no bigger than this picture. Yeah. Says, tiny yeah, little Daisy. Little tiny yeah, Daisy. Yeah, when I saw this one. Well, that's what well, I did. Well, that's just what, that's just what I was going to say next. That when I was growing up on a farm, I always thought this is a weed. Was a weed. Yeah. And you know, weeds and prairie plants is kind of in your interpretation. Yeah. Oh, the, sure. the pioneers who plowed up the prairie thought they were all weeds. Right, right. And so, you know, we, 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 the other one that you can still see a lot of over on the west side, if you, you everybody should at least drive through the park, yeah. is the, a, the, the pale. Flower. Now the pale has been, I honestly think there's 5,000 times more of it than there was last wow. year when I was here. Last year, the last two years, I had to work hard to find a picture, to find a place to take pictures. And here, the, the hillsides over there are just covered. It is almost gone too. Meadow Rue was beautiful this year, and it is truly, all that's left is just kind of the shell of the flowers on that one. Uh -huh. This is just starting, the oxeye sunflower. That's the yellow one that you see the most of right now. We're gonna have gobs of that. White yarrow, yeah. is, there's quite a bit of that around. Okay, now the question about milkweeds. We haven't answered that. Okay, there are probably at least a dozen milkweeds around. They're just different varieties. So the first one you saw was orange, and it's a lower shrub kind of thing. This is common milkweed. It is in full bloom right now, and it's there are lots and lots and lots of it along the roadside around the park. Stop if you can see one that close to the edge and get out and smell it. And I, I made everybody yeah. smell it on the van the other day. It smells absolutely intoxicating. So there's a lot of that around. Prairie dog bane is kind of, I guess, the, the, the plant people out here think it's a little bit marginal, but I think it's kind of a cool plant. And it's blooming now. I wasn't.
fascinated. And you know, it looks like a milkweed when it's coming up, and then it branches out at the top and it gets a white flower. I, I don't remember it from previous years here. The black-eyed Susans are really kicking in this week. There's a lot of them around. The only place you can see very much of the hoary pacoon is at the same place as there is the butterfly milkweed, which is back down behind a whippoorwill shelter, and that's a little bit of a walk-in. But it, there is some of that in there. This one, I had never seen. This is another one of the milkweeds, sand milkweed. I took this picture last Friday on the road. Isn't that, that's one of the, my favorite pictures. Uh, on the road, there's only one plant. And it's, and I think it could easily get mowed by the mowing guys, but it's right before the Valley View parking lot, right on the road. And last night when I went down that way, I, I couldn't spot it, but I maybe was going slow enough. But anyway, it's a really cool one. It's a, it's a one that likes dry area, and I think there's some places that are not under trail that you can hike in where there's more of that. Wild rose. Now I learned last night on the prairie hike that we have three kinds of wild roses here. One kind has little thorns, one kind has no thorns, and one kind has uh, some other difference. They all look, the flowers are all about the same. There's quite a bit of that over by Valley View, but you kind of have to wade out in the vegetation because the other stuff is getting so big that it's kind of covering it up. And that's not the same as the invasive. Right? No, that's multiflora. That's the multiflora multiflora yeah. rose. Mm -hmm. This is native I I was was that's that's Iowa. That's the native Iowa, Iowa state flower. flower. Mm -hmm. Is that like a this, it grows pretty low. So if you wanted to see some, park at Valley View, mm -hmm. and then on the same side of the road the gazebo's on, right between the parking lot and the road, down on the, kind of by the gazebo there, if you walk in, you'll, it's just intermingled. You have to look for it. Okay, tick trefoil is just starting to bloom. There's been lots and lots and lots of that this year, but it's just getting started. It's very pretty. Rattlesnake Master just starting to bloom. If you like, I, it's one of my favorites. I, it's just, I just think it has a lot of interest and it's very, it has a lot of character. The, the loop, the circle path at Valley View on the gazebo side, there's one spot where there's just tons of them. Does that dry? You know, it's supposed to have its name because it dries and you could rattle it. Mm -hmm. But I've, dry, I've been Not checking for three years and I've never heard it rattle. No, so. I don't know. Uh, but it's a very cool, interesting, unique yeah. plant. Mm -hmm. Slender Mountain Mint is just now starting to bloom. This is another one that you have to look down for because it's a, a lower kind of plant. There's lots of it out here this year. This is my last one. The compass plant is, and I actually took this picture last year over on that side of the park. It has that unique leaf with the, the, uh, all the articulation in the leaves, and it shoots up higher than the other stuff, and so you can see its silhouette. And it has, a, I mean, there, there are probably, you know, a half a dozen different things out here that have a very similar looking yellow flower, but it has such a distinctive looking leaf. So those are the things that are blooming now. Um, what's coming by the visitor, Ed, or the, 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 the Concert, what's the name of that place? Conservation Education Center. We're going to have some Michigan and or Turks cap lilies, but they haven't bloomed yet. We don't, you don't really can't tell until they bloom which you have. The purple cone flower is very much in the bud stage. We're going to have a lot of purple cone flower. Uh, compass plant I should have blooming now on there. And then there's going to be lots and lots of cup plant. Lots and lots and lots. I have a Turks cap that is almost finished blooming. Mm. And you know, the, I never knew the difference until I worked here. Turks Club has a green star in the center. Michigan Lee does not have a green star. So if yours has a green star, it's Turks Cap. If it doesn't, it's Michigan Lily. Okay. Okay. If it does, it's Turks, Turks Cap. Turks Green. No Turks. No green. It's it's just a, a fine star coming out from the petals. But you cannot mistake whether it has it or not. How come you don't have uh, the yellow trefoil? Because, okay, why don't I have the yellow trefoil? You guys were there on Tuesday. Why don't I have the yellow trefoil? Oh, quiz. I don't remember. <laughs> <It's not laughs> invasive. It is not native, and it is invasive. Oh, okay. So too bad. Too bad. Too bad. Actually, I'm working on another notebook like this of the invasives of the park. Mm -hmm. A couple of them that you'll see, is, and you see a lot of this as you drive around the park, but especially as you go on Highway 6 just outside of part is a uh, wild parsnip. Oh, oh yeah. And yeah. that's a bad one. Yeah. Uh, crown vetch. <laughs> 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 
they really and spread. The other one that we have a lot of here that's yeah. just yeah. starting to bloom yeah. is Queen Anne's lace. Yeah. Yeah. Bad stuff. Bad, 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 bad. It's very invasive. Do you have any other questions about the park or about wildflowers or anything? Let me just tell you a couple options. Anyone who wants to come up to the education center can, and look at, and I know you do have done that, so, and look at the, the plants that are blooming right around the center. There's not much walking involved in that. We can do that. If anyone wants to know specifically where the swans are, again, that map is pretty good. So what you want to do when you get to, if you go that way, if you go left out of the parking lot and all the way around, the swans will be on the outside on your right. And there are a couple spots where you can, from the road, see that wetland. And then you can catch just a little, just like a white speck is what they're like. If anybody wants to walk down there and wants someone to show them specifically, I can do that. Uh, if anybody wants to walk over and look at the butterfly milkweed, I can either take you or show you. I think those are the options. Or if you want to come inside and see the um, ornate box turtle, you can do that. <laughs>